mission of the Salvation Army is to do the most good for the most people who are in the most need. Me being able to give back to others what, what I was so freely given, I think is just the greatest um, opportunity that I have here. I think the program um, that they're doing for the children is wonderful. If there's a need, we're just trying to meet it. That's really what it comes down to. Merry Christmas to you. It's an association that goes as far back as most anyone can remember. The Salvation Army and the Red Kettle, forever linked. During the uh, Christmas months is when the Salvation Army is most visible. But it really is um, a um, program and service uh, to the greater community uh, that goes on 365 days a year. We like to say that uh, we have programs from the cradle to the grave. So it's very much holistic and for an entire lifetime. Other than the kettles, I knew nothing about the Salvation Army and the programs that they offered. Then you can imagine Jennifer Staub was pleased when she found out about the Salvation Army's after-school program, somewhere safe for her kids, 9-year-old Colby and 7-year-old Sierra. Sometimes people under the impression it might just be a drop-off center or some kind of daycare, but um, we try to clarify that and show them that there's a purpose in mind. Here, kids focus on lots of important things like leadership, responsibility, and let's not forget, homework. Sometimes it's fun to do homework and sometimes it's not. If you need help, Miss Jenny, Miss or Mr. Um, Jeff or um, Miss Chris will help you. We're also very focused on health and nutrition. They have a program called SPARK, which is a, it's like a glorified phys ed program where it's very games and fun oriented. SPARK is when you play, if the teacher tells you something, you do it. Cookie Monster, Cookie Monster, are you hungry? Cookie Monster is fun because you get to um, run around and you get to tag people and you get to scream. The after school program also offers the kids a number of clubs to choose from. Whether they want to cook, play basketball, or just read a book, they can do it here. In the process, they're learning and growing. When it is time for me to pick them up, like after school, they do not want to leave. They want to stay here. And that makes me feel very good as a parent to know that my children love to be here. I've been an educator, I've been a youth pastor, and for me this has been just, it's been the greatest job I've ever had. Well, we're on our way to um, pick up our seniors for the seniors program. It's just one of many things that Ken Rankin does with the Salvation Army. We have a seniors program uh, that he oversees and does a fantastic job. How are we doing, Irma? Fine. Are these your cookies for tomorrow? Yep. All right. But if you knew Ken's story, uh, he would be a very unlikely individual in that kind of um, uh, place of employment. I think I started when I was 13, probably, with my uh, first drink. By the time I was um, 16, I was already in a fir my first inpatient rehab. Some things really changed in my, in my life when I moved to Harrisburg. Um, I, I met my, uh, my wife, and I had a son here. Um, so when I came here, I started to, uh, to try and build a family, you know, and, 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 and try and do some of the right things. Um, but I'll tell you, there were, there were some things in my life that needed changing and that weren't. The drugs and alcohol were, were, still became a big part. Um, and eventually what they did was they destroyed that marriage. Um, I wasn't able to be the father that I needed to be to my son. It was September 1st, 2005, um, when everything came to a head. I had had enough, you know, and, and I really, looking back now, I really believe that God was prompting me um, and the Holy Spirit was with me, um, saying, Ken, you don't have to live this way anymore. And Ken Rankin hasn't lived that way since. He went to prison, got out, and found the Salvation Army. They were available, you know, to give me a place to start over, you know, to, to begin to walk in, in my new way of life. 
I've been blessed with a beautiful um, child. His name is Thomas, and uh, he's seven now. And um, I just I, I needed to be there for him. You know, it wasn't about me anymore. It was about him. The desires want me to you know get my son back um, and, and just be a, a good, productive member of society. You know. Um, to show hope to others. He steps into their world. He can say to them, I know how you feel. I know what you think. I know what you're experiencing because I've been there. If there's bread in there, you can put it out. And now, Ken is here. There's no place he'd rather be. I wear my scars proudly, you know, um, because it just really shows um, the glory of God and the, and the work that he can do in people's lives if you allow him to. I really, I really couldn't complain about anything. Life is just tremendous.